Will we all be playing poker in augmented reality? Will the 2030 world champion be crowned in the metaverse? Will online poker die altogether? Today, we're going to discuss what the future holds for poker. I'm going to look at seven specific types of technological advances that we either are seeing or probably will see soon and talk about the impact that they could have on poker and whether or not I see that impact taking place in the next 10 years. Let's dive in. The appeal of poker in virtual or augmented reality is obvious. You increase the engagement, you feel like you're playing in a live casino. I actually talked to a company who was building poker VR many, many, many years ago, and I didn't feel like the time was right. They actually ended up becoming PokerStars VR. PokerStars has been offering virtual reality poker for a while now. There are others who have VR poker. It hasn't really picked up, in my opinion, because of two things. One, not everybody has a VR headset. I have a VR headset myself. It's been sitting in my closet for four years. And two, it's gonna be so much harder to build liquidity with everybody one tabling when you've already restricted the potential market to people who already have a VR headset and wanna play online poker. Now, I wasn't too bullish on VR poker, but AR poker is something that I think has more of a chance. The fact that with AR, augmented reality, you can still interact with other things in your life in a way that you can't with VR. But the other thing about AR that makes this a little more possible is uh, now that I've seen kind of, you know, ads for Apple Vision Pro and you can see somebody wearing them and kind of treating it like a computer, um, I can now see a world where you can play in AR and you can play multiple tables as if it's a computer or you can choose the more immersive VR experience. You could toggle it on and off and that way you could potentially combine and get the best of both worlds. You get the liquidity of the multi-tablers and the immersive experience of VR for the players who want it. Will it become big in the next 10 years? I think probably not. I think in order for VR or AR poker to get big, there needs to be mass adoption of VR or AR tech. In order for that to happen, I think it needs to be to the point where it's relatively cheap and much easier to wear, much more like regular glasses. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll get there eventually, uh, but within 10 years, I, I, I don't think so. Poker in the metaverse. Uh, do I think there will be poker in the metaverse? I mean, I think there already is technically, uh, and I think there will be. Do I think it'll be really popular? I think probably not. I'm fascinated by the idea of the metaverse, and I guess to sum up the metaverse as I see it, you know, a world in which everything is digital, but everybody has kind of goods and property and attributes in this world that is probably going to end up being accessed through VR, AR, but doesn't need to be. There are a lot of metaverse-like projects going on. I'm not an absolute expert in them, but I do find it really interesting that in these new worlds that are being created, you can own land, you can start a business within this world. Um, I think that's really fun. And I think casinos or poker rooms, I think it's one of the most naturally fitting types of businesses that you could run within the metaverse. And it sounds really cool. And I think one day in, in the future will be really cool, but in the next decade, I don't see mass adoption in the way that that would have a big enough impact for, for online poker to move there, or at least move there in a large way. Um, first of all, there are too many metaverses right now, and eventually I feel like there needs to be a, a winner or two decided, and that's going to take a long time. Also, again, the best way to experience the metaverse, I think, is going to be AR, VR, and it's not quite there, mass adoption. Also, there have been games and worlds that are created that that are metaverse-like. Um, of course, without the AR, VR elements, um, popular game a long time ago I never played is called Second Life. As, as the name implies, you kind of live another life within that game um, as mass multiplayer. While it was a, a very popular game, it's not like the whole world played it. There were not going to be the biggest poker sites within Second Life. Um, there would be little ones. So I kind of think that's what we're going to see in the next little while at least. Um, if I'm wrong about that, it'd be pretty cool. That brings us to our next topic because a lot of these metaverse projects are built on blockchain tech. Is blockchain the future of online poker? So there are two main ways that I see blockchain tech having an impact on online poker. The first is decentralization. In 2011, the US Department of Justice seized the domains of Full Tilt Poker, PokerStars, and a few others, uh, blocking access for Americans to online poker. If full tilt at that point were fully decentralized, the Department of Justice would not have been able to do that. And that's not to say that there are not going to be ways for governments to intervene and cause problems for people playing on decentralized gaming sites, but it is going to be a lot more challenging. If there were one day a fully decentralized poker site with no single point of failure, there would be no thing for a government to come in and seize to shut it down. And at that point, you have a poker site that is open to everybody in the world. Now, you could see pros and cons to this. Now, I'm in favor of regulation and legalization of poker everywhere so that there is a body 
governing, making sure the poker sites are abiding by certain rules, being fair to the players. Uh, however, theory and practice uh, are very different. And what's happening in practice right now is that regulation is happening slowly. Um, there's a lot of over-regulation, by which I mean people are too restricted. Poker sites are too restricted, in my opinion, because the governing bodies don't actually understand poker. They're just government workers making up rules for gambling as a whole, not specific to poker, or sometimes poker specifically, but they don't really know enough about poker to make rules that are reasonable. They're cut off to the rest of the world, so poker sites there are never gonna grow very big. And as I've talked about a million times, liquidity is so important. And so if you're not sharing players across the world, you're not gonna be able to compete with these unregulated sites, whether it be fully blockchain or otherwise, that we see right now already. What I think needs to happen for the benefit of online poker is more regulation and legalization, but by a body that understands poker, by poker experts of some kind. I think that they need to pool players from multiple jurisdictions in order for it to grow and compete against the unregulated sites. Right now, unregulated sites have so much of an advantage because they don't have to follow all of these rules and they're allowed to bring players in, or they do, I guess I should say, bring players in from all over. Um, so they get the benefit of having a much larger player base, um, being taxed a lot less, not being restricted in what they can offer these players so they can come up with creative ideas and build great products that, that players love. Um, they can give more money back to the players because they're not being taxed as heavily and because they just have more revenue because they have larger player bases. They can have larger guaranteed tournaments with those larger player bases. And so right now, the theory of regulation is great and I'm in favor of it, but how it's working in practice is that governing bodies are, are not giving these sites really a good chance to compete against the sites who are unregulated. If that continues, if over-regulation or poor regulation, again, in my opinion, continues, then a decentralized poker site could change everything for online poker. And it could be for the better, or it could be for the worse. Kind of depends on, on how it plays out. So one of the biggest hurdles to a decentralized poker site is that you really need security. The biggest poker sites that are regulated um, and even some unregulated ones that are not decentralized have large security departments uh, of very talented people processing hands and, and reviewing data and figuring out when players are cheating. Blockchain technology could have a way to distribute this responsibility or reward certain people for this responsibility or hire certain people for this responsibility, but it's all a lot more messy based on my understanding. And so I think, I think they will really struggle with that. Similarly with marketing, you know, these, these sites as they are now can make large marketing efforts but they can't necessarily, uh, when it's a decentralized site, you have to kind of get everybody together um, in order to make decisions uh, for the company as a whole. Will this happen in the next 10 years? I actually don't know. I think that if this happened, it would have a huge impact on online poker. Again, positive or negative remains to be seen, but I don't know enough about the technology and how far along it is. I know, for, well, I believe right now, blockchain tech is not far along enough that you can build a poker site that functions fully, completely on blockchain. Will that be the case five years from now, 10 years from now? I just don't know. The second big thing that blockchain technology can do is provide provably fair games. So a randomized number generator that through a distributed ledger, they can prove is fair, is not rigged, is not biased towards anybody. Um, this is something that a lot of people have been arguing for as, as kind of the main benefit of blockchain tech. And I think the reason they're doing that right now is well, because some people believe that, but also because the technology is is there um, now, I believe, to do that, but not this bigger idea. I actually don't think this changes very much in terms of online poker. The reality is there, there are a ton of people out there, if you read forums or you read YouTube comments, who think that online poker is rigged, but the majority of those players tend to be players that we're either not going to play much anyways, uh, we're going to be low volume players because they're they're not very serious poker players, or they're going to be players who are also going to be pretty resistant and bothered by and or confused by blockchain technology and, and the kind of rougher onboarding experience that there is right now um, to getting there rather than just depositing via PayPal on a regular poker site that you can download on your computer with one click. So I actually don't think it's going to make a big difference from the provably fair perspective Maybe I'll be wrong. Next up, player verification through technological advances. This is one that I'm extremely interested in uh, because it would be great for online poker. What I mean by this is there exist some apps on which you can play poker and it shows the webcam, so it shows your face as you're playing. And this is one way to ensure, kind of, there are, there are hacks to get around it, that, that the person who you're playing against is the person who you think you're playing against. I have been saying for a little while now that I think that 
at high stakes online poker, there needs to be kind of a different set of criteria to play in those games. And I think you should have to have a webcam on. I think you should have to have some kind of camera that shows uh, your space, not necessarily to your opponents, of course, but to the poker site. And I think if a, a site implemented this, a lot of players would be more than willing to set that up if they're playing, let's say, you know, a $10,000 buy-in or higher. The reason, of course, for this is that some players are cheating, whether it's colluding or using bots or real-time assistance or multi-accounting, uh, ghosting. There, there are a lot of ways to cheat. And this would at least prevent a lot of that. It can kind of be done with webcams now, but I think uh, as tech comes out in the future, maybe something with biometrics, some other way to allow access to what's going on in your space. I don't know enough about the tech that could come out that can make this more possible, but uh, it is something I'm really interested in. You know, what tech, whether it's something in biometrics or some other way to verify that it's you playing, some other way to verify that you're not running any kind of uh, like secondary computer. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what can be done, but this is an area that I think things will change in the next 10 years. I think we will have high stakes games where you need to do more than just show up and click on your computer to prove that you are who you say you are and that you're the person playing at the time. I think this will definitely happen within 10 years. And I think it's, it's actually something that we need right away. And if we had this tech, it would actually open up some possibilities. One thing I've always been really excited about is the idea of some kind of ranking system in poker. Uh, chess has ELO ratings, would match people up according to their skill level in a way that's competitive and exciting where you actually want to climb in skill level. And so there are a couple of things that need to happen. First of all, if you're getting matched up based on your skill level and then playing for money, a lot of people would rather seem worse so they get matched up with weaker players. So there actually has to be incentive at the top to climb the rankings more than just pride. There needs to be financial incentive to get higher and higher. But the other thing that needs to happen and kind of needs to happen first is we need to make sure that players are multi-accounting. In online poker, to prevent cheating, we really want to stop giving people incentive to cheat. So these players will have incentive to not play on their account and then they'll figure, oh, I'll find somebody who's not that good and I'll play on their account. Maybe I'll split the profit with them. I'm going to get matched up against bad players and essentially slaughter all these bad players that I'm unfairly matched up with. That's one of the big reasons why we're not ready for it yet, in my opinion. Future tech impacting the live poker experience. With wearable tech or uh, software, hardware on the tables, could we potentially track everybody's stats at the table and display those? Could we make the games easier to play because we actually are digitally putting in antes rather than every player having to do it and, and everybody collecting it? Are we tracking the hands digitally so if there's any confusion, uh, it's cleared up immediately what has happened so far. Can people press a button to check the hand history up to this point? There are a lot of things like this that uh, could happen with tech. I don't think it's going to because there already exist poker tables in live casinos that you can play like with a button. <laughs> um, everybody has their cards under this this cover and you can press buttons to play. There, there exists this already and it hasn't taken off. And now obviously... If you combine it with the feeling of, you know, chips in your hand and cards in your hands, would it take off? Eh, I, I still just, I'm not really buying that that's something people are really interested in. The only way that I will say this could help is if we could have some kind of chess timer in poker tournaments um, and we need a little bit of technological advancement to do that, apparently, because we haven't done it yet and people have been arguing for it for a long time. That's, that's the only one that I see being a benefit. Within the next 10 years, yeah, I think that'll happen and I think that uh, it'd be great. How about brain-computer interfaces, uh, otherwise known as a, a chip in your brain? Um, that's something I have no idea where the technology stands right now and where it'll be in 10 years. I think that, you know, once we have chips in our brains, that could be a really bad thing for playing poker. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change everything. Presumably, like other technology, it'll be slow to, to have, you know, high, high impact, by which I mean the first models of it and the second and third models are not going to link our brain up with AI that tells us exactly how to play poker, obviously, but it, it could make a mess of, of even live poker, which right now seems very safe. I would imagine that once we all have chips in our brains, we would want to have areas with no chip access. And so maybe there would be kind of a, some kind of deactivating field or a Faraday cage where within it, we could not be accessing the internet with our brain chips. Um, if that were the case, then maybe live poker rooms are set up like this, but um, we're getting very far into the future now and, and I'm confused. So all of these different technological advances 
Uh, as you can see, most of them I don't think are going to have a big impact in the near future. Some might. The big question mark for me as to where poker is going in the next five to 10 years is regulation. Will the regulations change in a way that allow for online poker to grow more or will they be shrinking online poker? Are the countries going to share liquidity with each other? Are more and more states going to legalize online poker? Will we see a rise of a decentralized poker site? Um, will we see some of these already large unregulated poker sites get bigger and bigger if the regulated markets are getting smaller and smaller. That's what I have my eye on and where I'm very curious to see how things play out. These other technological advances are fun and exciting and uh, I'm usually gonna be an early adopter of a lot of this tech because I, I find it really cool, but I do think it's gonna be a while before it has a real impact on the way that we play poker. I hope you enjoyed our glimpse into the future. Till next time, I'm Phil Galfon. Take care and good luck.